Hello, welcome back to Chatomics. Uh, this is Tommy. So in today's video, I'm going to show you uh, how to analyze chip sequencing data. So ChipSeq was the first data type that I, I start, started to learn how to analyze when I started to learn bioinformatics. So it's always dear and near to my heart. So in the end of the video, I will share with you a link that for you to download a step-by-step -step guide that I put together uh, in the PDF. So make sure you stick to the end. Okay. So first of all, what is even a chip sequencing? So chip sequencing stands for prompting immunoprecipitation followed by uh, sequencing. So from this review by Peter Park, and I just borrowed this carton, and we know DNA uh, wraps on uh, nucleosomes, and the nucleosomes are comprised of uh, proteins called histones. So those histones are subject to uh, various different format of uh, modifications, and they are transcription factors that binds to those nucleosome free regions. And chip sequencing is a technology to identify the regions that are enriched for transcription factors binding or those histone modifications. So to do this, first you actually uh, fragment the chromatin to uh, small pieces, for example, 200 base pair, either, either by isonication uh, or, or by some other uh, uh, enzyme digestion. So then you use uh, an antibody to target the uh, transcription transcription factor of interest or the histone modification of interest and do, do a pull down. And then you purify those DNAs and then uh, make a library and put them on the sequencer uh, to sequence them. So in the end, you get those uh, reads from the sequencers. So what you do after you get those reads, you align them back to the genome. So in this example here, so you align those reads in, into the genome and you do a pile up of those reads and you see if there's a high signal of those reads then you know there's a re enrichment of uh, either the transcription factor here, CDCF, in this region or you have histone modifications enriched in this region and here in this region. So in this case, you will see uh, different, uh, depending on whether it's a transcription factor or histone modification, the binding profile is quite different. For transcription factors, usually it's very sharp. For, ex for example, CTC over here, you can see a really sharp peak here. But for histone modifications, usually you see a more diffused pattern. So in this case, uh, for example, H3K36 um, trimethylation is a known uh, marker for uh, genes that uh, in the gene body that is actively transcribed. And also you see the transcription factor, um, the RNA uh, polymers 2 is bind to the prom promoter region of FBX07 gene. And H3K27 trimethylation is a known actually heterochromatin marker. So yeah, and you, those uh, genes that are covered by those, they are actually uh, silenced. So you see it's a roughly mutual exclusive pattern of H3K27 trimethylation and H3K36 trimethylation here. So using chip sequencing, you can identify um, those regions. Right? And, and those transcription factors and histone modifications are really important in terms of regulating gene expression. So it's a, it's a really popular uh, technology to study uh, gene regulation. Okay, so, so this is the analysis steps uh, for chip sequencing that I put together actually a, a snake make pipeline. I use this uh, pipeline to process actually hundreds of uh, uh, in-house generated chip sequencing data sets uh, when I was in Cornell Rice Lab at MD Anderson Cancer Center. So you can go to this link and to find this uh, 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 pipeline. So the first step is always uh, getting the reads uh, from the sequencer. So those are the FASTQ files or the raw sequencing uh, files. So what you do, you align them into the, into the genome and you get the file called band file. So those are aligned binary files. Uh, for RNA sequencing, for example, you align them to uh, transcriptome. Again, you also get a band file. So you can use this tool called SAM tools to actually convert the band file to SAM file. So SAM file is more like a, a regular TXT file you can visualize. You can uh, take a look at, uh, in the command line. So a uh, common thing you do is after you actually align them to the genome, uh, get a band file, then you can call peaks 
and you get the file called bat file. So bat file is just a t text and a JPEG file with a minimal three columns like from song, start, and end. So it tells you uh, in the genome where uh, the signal is enriched. And uh, uh, there's another file called bigwig file. It's the binary pile up file or the coverage file, which I will talk a little bit more uh, in the next slide. So this uh, pipeline was specifically designed for uh, uh, histone modifications and we profiled uh, f uh, five different histone modifications. So I have some uh, steps, for example, Chrom HM that is specifically for detecting the combination of different histone modifications or the so-called Chromlin states. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit more about bigwig files. So you can create a bigwig file from the band file. So in the, inside the band file essentially it just tells you, okay, this is the read from the sequencer and you know it maps to Chrom song and from, from this region to this region, to, from this coordinate to that coordinate, right? And this bigwig file or the backwrap file, essentially it's very similar to the bat file. You have the Chrom song, start, end, but in the last column, you have this numbers, which uh, is telling you how many reads or how, how strong the signal uh, is in that region, right? So, so uh, to calculate that, it's actually uh, uh, very uh, straightforward. For the first thing you, you need to do, okay, so the reads is usually, for example, 30 to 50 base pair. But the DNA fragments uh, is usually 200 base pair, and we only sequence the, the first 30 to 50 base pair. So in order to, to make this pile up uh, big weak file, so you have to first actually extend uh, the reads into the fragment length. So in, for example, here, so first, then the second step, you actually bin the genome into small bins, like for example, 50 base pair, Per bin, it really depends on the resolution you want to. So in this case, each interval here is 50 base pair, and here is a fragment, which uh, is extended to 200 base pair, the fragment size. And it's really simple. Now for each bin, you can just count how many fragments in that bin. So for example, you have like one uh, fragment here, just one here, then you have like two here, and here you have one, two, three, four, five, you have five here. And after you get those numbers, so, so those numbers, uh, for example, this like per 50 base pair being here. And of course you can make a uh, smaller bean size or bigger bean size, but essentially just the histogram. If you plot them uh, as a histogram, this is the uh, signal intensity uh, file or the big weak file. So after uh, you get band files uh, and the big weak files, so you can for, for uh, it visualize those big weak files or the uh, raw signal intensity files in a tool called IGV or the, this genome browser, uh, which is developed by the Broad Institute. So this is the big weak files here, as you see here, uh, for, for uh, this example. And you can now use a tool such as Max or Homer to call Pixie. So it essentially will identify the regions in the genome that have enriched uh, 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 signals here. So for example, those are the peaks, and those are the bad files if you will upload it into IGV. And then you see, um, visually you should see, okay, those peaks should be corresponding to the signals in, in, in the raw big weak file. And usually that's always uh, the best like, quality control uh, methods that I use just w with your eyes it's because you just browse ar around different regions of the genome and to see how confident you feel those peaks are, right? Okay, and I really want to introduce a tool called bat tools. So according to the name, you'll see it actually uh, deal with the, uh, the bat files. So bat files are really uh, simple, file, uh, simple format like Chrome song start and end, right? But it's very useful because one of the most common questions you can ask after you get your chip sequencing data 
and you identify the peaks for your, for example, transcription factor, you want, you want to ask where like those transcription factors bind. So which genes are bound by my transcription factor? And to do this, you can, so you have two peak sets here, for example, here A uh, are the promoter regions of uh, all, all the genome, in the whole genome, and B is the, the um, peak uh, where the transcription factor binds. So you can just use this to bad tool, use bad tools and the intersect command, and depending on what uh, uh, arguments you use, and you can see, okay, you can identify, okay, this, this promoter has binding of my transcription factor, and this one too, but this one not, right? And that tool is a very versatile tool and has many other really useful uh, commands that you can use. I highly recommend you go to this um, uh, documentation page and take a look. Uh, so in the early days, I think you will see <laughs> in most of the uh, genomic paper that has chip sequence data, those uh, heat map uh, or this metagene uh, uh, plot. So really, those are not uh, mi mysterious. I mean, in the beginning, probably you think it is, but let's first understand how this heat map is made, right? So a heat map is just a data matrix and then you just color code each, um, each grid or each, uh, each cell. So in this case, uh, so you have a transcription factor, uh, a transcription start sites, and 3000 upstream and 3000 downstream, right? And the same thing here, so you can break down it into small beans. So for example, you can use 100 base pair as one bean. So in here to here, you have uh, like 30 beans here, 30 beans here. And so here, each row here is one, uh, one gene or one uh, uh, transcription star site, TSS. And what you can do is say, okay, for each transcription star site plus three, star, three KB upstream and downstream, and you can count how many reads that are fall into each bean, just like how you calculate the um, coverage in, in the previous uh, big week file, right? So, so in this case, for example, you have like 10,000 10, rows here, then the columns, because you have like um, 30 beans here, 30 beans here, so you have like 60 beans. So it's like, so this uh, heat map is just a uh, representation of 10,000 rows by six, 60 actually columns here. And you plot, then sort them, and then you will see this profile for, in this case, actually K4 trimethylation, with it, which is a no marker to, uh, to mark the activate, activated uh, tr uh, genes, uh, tr uh, promoters. And to plot this actually, is, then it's much easier. You just get the average of each bin or each column for each column here. So now you, you get actually 60, 60 values, like because you have, so you, for each bin here is 100 base pair. And then you just calculate the average of this uh, uh, of this, for example, 10,000 rows here. And then you just plot here, like uh, 60, so you have 60 points and then you just um, connect them together. So so this is a typical actually uh, profile you'll see um, of HDK4 trimethylation around transcranial start sites here. And you see a deep dip here because mostly um, uh, the histone modifications are occurring uh, nearby that transcription sites. And there are other tools to, to make those figures. And for example, I recommend you use deep tools and it's really also versatile. You can use that to make uh, big weak files from band, from band files, or you can also use that to make heat maps just like here. But I prefer uh, this tool called Enriched Heat Map by Zhuguang Gu, which, who is the author of a complex heat map. So, uh, I also have a different video for uh, how to make how to make a heat maps so and make sure you check it out. And once you identify those peaks, then the next step you can do uh, the motif analysis. So what DNA motifs is enriched in those peaks? So there are two really popular uh, tools. One is called Mimi and the other one is Homer. So 
you can identify those uh, DNA binding motifs in those regions. So especially when you have a treatment versus control uh, samples. So first you can identify peaks in your control group, then you can also identify the peaks um, in your uh, treatment group, then you can do a bad tool intersect to find the peaks that are unique to your treatment group, right? And then you can use those peaks to do motif enrichment and to see, okay, potential what transcription factors is binding to those treatment unique uh, uh, binding peaks. So that's very useful and to understand uh, gene regulation. And of course, uh, to follow uh, up with the, uh, uh, the treatment versus control comparisons, you want to do this differentially, uh, differential binding analysis. So in this review paper um, uh, by, uh, by the authors, uh, really depending on the different profiles of your chip sequence, whether it's sharp, uh, transcription factors, or whether it's broad, broad like histomodifications, whether you have like uh, biological replicates and they, you know, whether you have uh, predefined regions or not, then it has recommendation what tools to use. So I personally have used DiffBind. So, so essentially after you actually uh, has identified the peak sets, for example, you have control group and you have your treatment group, you call peaks, you call peaks, and you get a union of all the peaks. And those will be the rows the peaks will be the rows, and then the columns will be the samples. So you just count how many reads uh, of each, uh, that fall into that peak for your control samples and your treatment samples. So then it's very similar to just RNA sequencing differential gene expression analysis, right? So for RNA sequence analysis, so each row will be one gene, or will be genes, and then each uh, column will be um, one sample, and in this case, each row will be like one peak, chromosome, start and end in this region, and each column will be uh, a sample. So what's the, what's the signal, what, how many reads, and that fall into that peak for that sample. Then you can use just commonly used tools, because those are count data, so you can use uh, tools uh, such as DSIG2 uh, or EDGEAR to do those differential binding analysis. Uh, so uh, I promise that I will sh uh, share with you this uh, uh, PDF file. So where so I wrote this uh, chip sequencing chapter for BioStar Handbook uh, back in 2017, and in this in this uh, chapter I actually uh, show you how to actually download data from Geo from uh, the raw file, FastQ files, how to align them using a bow tie uh, to align them to the genome the core peaks use max to how to visualize them in IGV and how to do motif analysis and how to make heat maps using uh, uh, enriched uh, heat map. Uh, so go to this link and then grab, grab it. So I will have the uh, link for this presentation in, uh, in the video description. So go ahead and uh, download, uh, download it. Uh, I think that's it for today. Uh, click uh, subscribe if you like this content and uh, thank you. Happy learning and see you next time.